feature match area where we're going to see Harlan Fear, who is currently seventh on our leaderboard, with Colas Eldrazi facing off against teammate on Next Ridge Games, Bradley Carpenter. Both players are eight and one. Hopefully, this mulligan doesn't hamper Harlan too much, but in a 75 card mare, you got to feel like Brad is feeling good being up three cards on his opponent. That is absolutely true. Despite that, the Eldrazi deck, it has some very potent lands and some very potent creatures. So even on a mulligan to four, we could st still see an explosive start out of Harlan. Uh, so it looks like Brad Carpenter is going to start off with an Eldrazi Temple. Harlan Fear has an Ancient Tomb. Going to go down to 18 to cast a uh, Fire Extender Revoker. He is going to name Umazawa's Jite since they both know each other's decks. Harlan's going to attack with his Revoker after getting Wastelanded. Just play another Ancient Tomb and pass it back to Brad Carpenter. Let's see if he has a creature to deploy. He does not yet. He's just going to play a Mistress Factory. Can so it looks like Brad's start is a little slow. Even though Harlan is the one who's mulliganed so low and he was on the draw, he's kind of ahead in this board state, which is pretty interesting. So Harlan's going to take two and go down to 14. It looks like he's casting Warping Well to make a 1-1 Eldrazi Scion on Brad's end step. Now that's going to give him at least three mana this turn to be able to cast some spells. So he's just going to attack with the Phyrexian Revoker. Brad Carpenter is going to use Warping Well to exile it since it does have a toughness of one. And we're going to see a five mana, five, five endless one out of Harlan on a mulligan to four. Yeah, pretty impressive. And it only took a couple cards. I really like killing the Fire Exchange Revoker. Jite, even though Bradley hasn't drawn one yet, is definitely one of the big mirror breakers. That's going to be something that is going to really excel in creature versus creature combat. So Bradley Carpenter is just going to go ahead and use an Eye of Ugin to power out a Reality Smasher and attack. Harlan's going to block and trade off with his Endless One, but just pass back with no play, and Brad Carpenter has another copy of Reality Smasher, and it looks like this is about to smash Harlan's reality of trying to win this game. Yeah, and we can see how things are lining up extra poorly for Harlan. He has the City of Traders and another one in his hand. Drawing multiples of those isn't particularly good, especially when you're already low on lands. And then drawing the Chalice later in the game is also not particularly great, particularly in the mirror. It looks like we have a big old endless one is going to come out. One, two, three, four. Is a six, six. Yeah. Going to be bigger than anything that Harlan can cobble together. And Brad Carpenter is going to take this match on the back of two Reality Smashers. But I have to feel like it was that Mulligan to four that really hampered Harlan. On top of Mulliganing, you said he had the extraneous copy of City of Traders. He also ended the game with a Chalice of the Void and a Trinisphere in his hand, which are basically worthless in their mirror. Yeah, those are cards you want to draw in a different matchup. Uh, Harlan definitely got the bad end of the stick. Not only was did he have to mulligan to fewer cards, I had mentioned how even if he's on fewer cards, he may still have an explosive start, but he just kind of got the worst of all things. He just <laughs> mulliganed and drew the worst cards in the matchup. So we'll see uh, you know, how things go for the post-board games. He's going to be able to take out those cards that aren't particularly good in the matchup and bring in some better stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look at the sideboard while our players are sideboarding to see what kind of action we have going on. And they do have the exact same 75. So Brad Carpenter has four Leyline of the Void, two copies of Dismember, two Ratchet Bomb, two Spatial Contortion, two copies of Winter Orb, two Endbringer, and a Warping Well. What do you think they're going to do here? So I think they're going to be definitely bringing in the two Dismembers, the two Spatial Contortions, the two Endbringer, and the Warping Well. I think that they can consider Ratchet Bomb and Winter Orb, but I don't think that they'll bring those in because there's a little too much collateral damage. Uh, the Ratchet Bomb usually is something that is going to be better against tokens, but both these decks have cards that are not only high casting costs, so you'd have to tick the Ratchet Bomb up quite a bit in order for it to do something, but they're going to have the same casting costs too, so you have to worry about, you know, charging up your Ratchet Bomb to kill your opponent's Reality Smasher, but then drawing one your own. So. Well, I do know that in uh, at the modern Pro Tour for the Gatewatch, uh, Ratchet Bomb was something that a lot of the players that were playing Eldrazi were talking about as being good in the mirror uh, as an easy way to handle Endless One, which is one of the cards that can quickly get out, oh, get out, get out of handle. Yeah, so if with the big Endless One, Ratchet Bomb is basically the only way to deal with it. So that is a, a very insightful remark. Uh, and so do you think that the sideboarding is going to be the same for you know, both Brad and Harlan, or is one player on the draw going to side a little differently here? I could see 
them doing minor things differently depending on if they're the player or the draw, but for the most part, I think it's just going to be bring in all, like, just make it so your deck is all your best creatures and all your best removal spells. Sounds like a good recipe to win the mirror yeah. match. <laughs> now, I know that both of these players are on our, our uh, the hunt for open points yeah. uh, to try and qualify for uh, SCG points to try and qualify for the Players' Championship at the end of the year, uh, as are a lot of our viewers. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Season 1 schedule so we can see what we have left uh, before the end of uh, the season. Uh, so the Season 1 schedule started out at the Las Vegas Invitational back in December that was won by Caleb Shearer. Yeah, really sweet. Uh, and then we had we were in Cincinnati and in Charlotte. We were in Atlanta, Columbus, and then we had the StarCityGames.com Regional Championships, which is a great place to snag some SCG points. We were in Louisville last time, and this weekend we're in Philly playing Legacy. Next will be in Indianapolis, March 19th and 20th for a standard open. Baltimore, April 9th, 9th through 10th for a standard open. And then the Big Daddy Columbus, mm -hmm. 15th through 17th of April for a standard modern split tournament. We're going to crown an invitational champion where they get a token, $10,000, a whole bunch of SCG points, and an invite to the Players' Championship at the end of the year. Also, at the end of that Invitational weekend, we're going to crown three players who have the highest point total on our leaderboard and give them slots to that Players' Championship. So there's a lot to be earned for the rest of the season. Yeah, a lot of narratives come to a head at that Invitational. That's an event that I always look forward to seeing or playing in. Lastly, I want to point out really quick, if you play in any of our Open weekends or in any of the Classics at the Opens, or if you play in any of the Open weekends uh, that has these Classics, you're able to get a Kitchen Links play max. Sick. I love that one. My I favorite is the murder cat in the corner, though. Yeah, I I'm going to mention that every time because he's, he's sneaky. He's trying to hide from your view. And again, these are free limited edition play mat with entry to any season one open. Absolutely free just for playing. Yeah. Let's go ahead and hop back and see if Harlan and Bradley are ready for us to play some more magic. Looks like they're going to finish shuffling up. Uh, so, Andy, I want to ask, so you, you, you like this version of the Eldrazi deck better than the versions that we saw earlier? Yeah, for sure. I think that this one, it's just more streamlined. It's playing a little bit more weight on the creatures. It has the Eldrazi Mimics, for example, which I don't believe we saw in the last version. And the Warping Whale is a pretty good removal spell. Having a Dismember ra helps round things out so that the deck can push through a Tarmogoyf that gets too big. And even though it has less disruption, for example, it doesn't have the Thorn of Amethyst that we have seen previously, it does have two Trinospheres, so I would say two Trinospheres kind of equivalent to, you know, four Thorns of Amethyst in terms of disruption for a lot of decks. So I think this deck is just, uh, its power is a little bit more consolidated, I think is a, a nice way to say it, where mm -hmm. it's playing the best threats and the best disruptive pieces rather than having more threats, but having some of them be a little lower quality just to fill the ranks, or having more disruption with some of that extra disruption being of lower quality. So I think this is just you know, a well-rounded deck where they've just got a couple good removal spells, a good curve of creatures to be proactive, a couple disruptive elements, but they're playing the most disruptive uh, of, out of the disruptive elements they have available. So it looks like both players are going to settle on their six. We're going to finish up our scries and then hop into the game. Harlan Fear is down a game on Kolas Eldrazi against his teammate, Bradley Carpenter, on a 75-card mirror. Harlan's going to start out with a Wasteland and just pass the turn back to Brad. And I'm not sure, but I think I think Harlan just got back from shooting a Vidal Sassoon commercial. He did. You see you see that flowing hair, and you know all the, all the ladies are going gaga over that. So Bradley Carpenter is going to play Phyrexian Revoker. We're going to get word from the table spotter what he's actually naming with it. Uh, sounds like he did name Umazawa's GTA. Yeah, I have to imagine that in the mirror they're just always going to name GTA. And Harlan just drew a copy of GTA. <laughs> well, he's got some time. They have a lot of removal in their deck uh, post board. I shouldn't say a lot of removal, but a lot more than they originally had. And the Fire Exchange Revoker is basically going to be able to be targeted with all of it. So Harlan's just going to go ahead and wasteland Brad's Ancient Tomb, tie up the life totals by going to 18 to cast his Umazawa's Jite and pass it back to Bradley Carpenter, who is going to wasteland Harlan's Ancient Tomb and then attack with his Fire Exum Revoker, bringing the life totals 18 Brad Carpenter, 16 Harlan Fair. And because these decks are playing not only lands like Ancient Tomb and Ivugan that tap for two mana, but lands like City of Traders, where you want them to be your last land drop and you want all your previous ones to stick. Jockeying for position in terms of the mana base, seeing these wastelands fall back and forth uh, makes a lot of sense to me. 
So Harlan's going to go ahead and use a Dismember on that Phyrexian Revoker, falling to 12 life after deploying a Mistress Factory. Brad does have an Eye of Ugin for the turn, and then it's going to cast a free Eldrazi Mimic. It looks like he just has a hand full of Endbringers. So I imagine we're going to see him pumping out some Endbringers here as we move into these next few turns when he lays some more land. And we can really see how there's a real price these players are paying for the access to the cards that they can they can cast. Basically, the Ancient Tombs are, into, are doing damage to Harlan's life total. Dismember is doing damage to Harlan's life total. He's only been hit once by his opponent. He's already down to 12. So Harlan does have a 2-2 Endless one. Brad's going to lay Cavern of Souls and name Shapeshifter. That way he can cast Phyrexian Metamorph without taking any damage. He's going to cast a, an Endless one for three using the Eye of Ugin and his Cavern of Souls. Transform his Eldrazi Mimic into a 3-3 three, three for the turn and get in some damage. And this is going to knock Harlan all the way down to nine, uh, which means he's fairly close to potentially dying. But this is always Jite is going to be online for Harlan now. As he's going to lay a cavern, a city of traders, equip the endless one with Umazawa's Jite, and put it into the red zone. And this is a great attack because if Bradley blocks, the Umaz Jite is going to be able to finish off both creatures. And if Brad doesn't block, then Harlan's going to be able to not only kill the mimic anyway, but it's going to still have a counter left for you know a pump or gain some life or you know do the minus one minus one thing. So, so it looks like Brad's just going to take the two damage and fall to 16. Harlan is going to get two counters on his Umazawa's Jite, and that's going to give him a lot of play on this board state. He's just going to pass the turn back to Brad, who's found another copy of Cavern of Souls. And now we're in the four mana range where he can start deploying things like Thought Not Seer and eventually Reality Shaper. I have to imagine that this Umazawa's Jite is going to be the most important thing going on on the board, though. It is just such a powerhouse in any creature mirror, and even though these Eldrazi are the hot new thing, I don't think they're going to be able to handle Jite in the way that uh, they would like to. So Brad is going to deploy a Thought Not Seer uh, in response to him casting it. Harlan's going to use a counter off his Umzawa's Jite to get rid of that Eldrazi member before it becomes a 4-4. He's going to take an endless one out of Harlan's hand, and now Brad has to decide how he's going to do this combat. Looks like he's just going to pass the turn back to Harlan without attacking, keeping back his 3-3 Endless One on defense, along with that Thought Not Seer. Harlan's just going to send his Endless One into the battlefield. It is a 2-2 from those two counters, and with the Umazawa's GT, he could potentially take it up to a 4-4, but Brad's just going to take the damage down to 14. Harlan's going to get two more counters on that GT, and then what is going to cast some spells in his main phase. And I'm a little surprised that Brad didn't make the attack last turn. He could have traded his Endless One for Harlan's Mistress Factory. I feel like that would have been a good trade for him to make, but I guess he just values forcing Harlan to keep that mana available if he wants to use it for that trade. One thing that's also a little interesting about these two players, we had mentioned that they were on the same team before, and you'll notice that they're both wearing hoodies that say NRG. There's been a little bit of confusion about the NRG being Nerd Rage Gaming, or uh, is it Next Ridge Gaming? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these are the, the Floridian team of, that are Next Ridge. So don't get them confused. But for teams out there, you guys got to you know, work on more iconic branding that keeps you apart. <laughs> so it looks like Bradley Carpenter was holding back that Endless One so that he would have a little bigger of an attack here once he drew into some more mana for his Reality Smasher. So Harlan's just going to go ahead and activate his Mistress Factories. They're going to block uh, a Reality Smasher and an Endless One. He's going to use both factories to make one of them a 4-4 that's on the Endless One so it will live through combat. And then he's going to use all three GT counters to make the Reality Smasher a 2-2. So when, it, when it's all said and done, Harlan's going to take four damage down to five. He's going to lose his Endless One and his Reality Smasher. And Harlan's only going to lose one copy of Mistress Factory. That seems like a big win for Harlan in that combat step. Absolutely, but there's not a whole lot that Bradley could have done differently. It's just really coming down to the fact that there's an active Jite and there's nothing that Bradley can do about it. So Harlan's been able to deploy a copy of Thought Not Seer. It's going to take the last card out of Brad Carpenter's hand, which is a Warping Whale. And so both players have a Thought Not Seer on the battlefield, but this Umazawa's Jite has just taken over the game for Harlan. So one thing that's a little interesting to note is there's a lot of decks that play Umazawa's Jite. We've seen all the Stoneforge Mystic decks play the Jite. The one thing that's a little unique about this situation rather than those situations is when a Stoneforge Mystic plays, deck plays a Jite, normally they cast Stoneforge Mystic, 
the Jitte goes into their hand, and then the Eldrazi deck knows exactly when to cast their Thought Not Seer to snipe it. Where in this matchup, it's just going to be rolling off the top of the deck. There's no warning as to when the opponent has it. And it's a lot easier for the opponent to deploy and equip because they have so many lands that tap for two colorless. So it's, a it's, it's kind of interesting to think how dominant Umazawa's Jite is in this particular situation, and how it probably is just a really good card against the Eldrazi deck, but how you may be at a little bit more of a disadvantage in a Stoneforge Mystic rather than Eldrazi deck using it. Now Brad's been able to use a copy of Dismember to go down to 8 life to take care of Harlan's Thought Not Seer. It's going to allow him to draw a card. Now we don't know what that card is yet, but he has attacked with his Thought Not Seer to bring Harlan down to 1, but he's leaving himself completely dead on the attack back if he doesn't have a blocker. So it looks like he does have a copy of Phyrexian Metamorph, so he is going to be able to cast that, taking 2 damage down to 6, and let's see what he's choosing to copy. He's going to copy his own Thought Not Seer and get rid of the last card in Harlan's hand. So Harlan's going to go ahead and attack with his Endless One. Brad is going to block with his Metamorph that has copied Thought Not Seer. Harlan's going to use both counters to pump it up to a 6-6 six, six and get through for lethal damage. And here Brad is hoping to draw some type of removal spell to get rid of that Mishra's Factory so that he can attack through with his Thought Not Seer and win. It is just an Eldrazi Mimic and he's going to pass it back to Harlan who looks like he's poised to try and take this game. Yeah, Ooh, the Spatial Contortion is real bad. Yeah, the uh, Draft All-Star Spatial Contortion. <laughs> so Harlan looks like he's drawn a copy of Reality Smasher. He doesn't quite have the mana to cast it yet, but if he does happen to get into that spot, that Reality Smasher is going to take the game. In the meantime, he's just going to keep up this same dance where he attacks with Endless One, uses those two counters from Umazawa's GTA to make it a 6-6, six, six, kill Brad's blocker, gets two more counters, and now he just has a 4-4 four, four Endless One. And uh, if for some reason Harlan forgot to use his counters, Bradley would have been able to win there, so he goes for it. But obviously Harlan, who's been using his Jite, all gave him long knows how to use a Jite. <laughs> so for those of you who are a little unfamiliar with how Umzawa's Jite works there, Bradley Carpenter attacked with a 5-5 five, five Hasting Trample. Harlan had a 4-4 four, four that he put in front of it and would have died from the one point of trample damage. However, he's able to use his Umazawa's Jite to give the Reality Smasher minus one, minus one. He can even do it twice to make it a 3-3 three, three so that his Endless One is going to live and then he can attack back for the win on the next turn. Yeah, and the big story of that game was certainly the Umazawa's Jite. We were talking before about how a lot of these matches come down to effective mana usage, getting ahead on mana, and then using it for effective things. That, that Jite was just an absolute powerhouse because it only required uh, a four mana investment, I believe. He just played it and then equipped it, a total of four mana. But then out of that four mana, he machine gunned down creatures, he pumped his own, he was able to manipulate comment, uh, combat. He got, for, for his four mana investment, he got a lot done. He absolutely did. And Harlan is a very good magic player. As you can see there, he is currently seventh on our leaderboard. We do have a player profile for Harlan, so let's take a look at that. He does have beautiful flowing locks. Yep. He's 21 from Charlottesville, Virginia. Two open top eights, one open win. He is a huge Pittsburgh Steelers fan. He donates his hair after it reaches a certain length when he gets it cut. And he's a former wrestler in high school. I have to imagine he didn't have the long hair when he was wrestling in high school. Yeah, probably not. I feel like he needs to add to this player card, or to this info card, that he's uh, you know, one of the top Vidal Sassoon models, though. That's something that I would want to brag about if it, you know, if I was. Now his teammate, Bradley Carpenter, is also a force to be reckoned with on the Open Series. So let's go ahead and take a look oh, at... Oh, he's a lead singer of a pop, pop punk band? That's pretty awesome. I, yeah, wonder, I wonder if they have a band like Good Charlotte or, you know, if they... I have hope his band is called the Bradley Carpenters. Oh, that, that's a sick band But name. he has 23 from St. Petersburg, Florida. He has three open top eights. As you said, a lead singer of a pop punk band. He's a fantasy football fanatic, much like our own Cedric Phillips. Mm -hmm. And he really wishes Taco Bell would deliver on the East Coast. I feel like him and uh, Rudy, Rudy, Rudy Britzka Rudy loves are, Taco Bell also. are kindred spirits with that, yeah. with that Taco Bell love. Mm -hmm. So we got Harlan Fear, Bradley Carpenter, for those of you just joining us. They are tied up one game apiece in this 75-card colorless Eldrazi mirror match. Both players are 8-1. Whoever wins this match is going to put themselves in a great position to try and top 8 this event. Whoever happens to lose the match will still be in the hunt for a top 8, but will really only have one more loss to give before they're going to be out of contention. Yeah. And while these players are still shuffling up, i got to ask you, what is your favorite punk band? 
punk band yeah. or pop punk band? Because they're, they're kind of a different, they different are, genre. They are different, but I'm more interested in the punk. So my favorite punk band, uh, I would have to say, would be AFI, A Fire Inside. Oh, yeah, AFI's great. Um, they've, they, they've, got, they've gotten more pop punk in yeah, their new albums in, are in their pop newer punk. days, but yeah. I really like the old days. You know, a little Black Sails. Mm -hmm. um, you know, All Hollows EP. Like, I, I'm, a, yeah. I'm a big AFI guy. I actually got into to punk when I was in college. So yeah. I was a big, like, hip-hop, hard rock kind of guy yeah. in, in high school. And then my roommate, when I was a freshman in college, was, like, super into punk and mm -hmm. ska and, and just, all, like, all kinds of stuff. And I started listening to that music and really got into it. Yeah, I, I like all kinds of music, but my favorite punk band is definitely uh, Operation Ivy. They're one of the really early ones. That's an ones. old school punk yeah, band. Yeah, it is an old school punk band, but that's my favorite. I still have a, an Op Ivy shirt that I bought when I was in like eighth grade or something, and it, it has holes, it's falling apart, but I don't have the heart to throw it away. So Brad's going to start off with an Eldrazi Temple. He's going to cast a 2 2 Endless one here. Uh, Harlan's just going to use his Wasteland to take care of that Eldrazi Temple. Uh, Brad, but Brad does have a threat on the battlefield already. And it really seems like both of these players are just firing off Wastelands as soon as they draw them. It's, it almost seems like the first order of business in a lot of situations. So we've got a Wasteland from Brad Carpenter just passing it back to Harlan. Harlan has a copy of Eye of Ugin, going to deploy an Eldrazi Mimic for free. But Brad just picked up a copy of Umazawa's Jite, which has the potential to take over this game, just like we saw in last game. Yeah, we can see... Bradley being in a little bit of an awkward spot having to play a City of Traders so early. And we can see uh, that Harlan, that Eye of Ugin is probably the best land for him to play because it's a soul land. It uh, makes two mana, but it's not a City of Traders that he would have to sacrifice if he plays an extra land. It's not an Ancient Tomb where he's going to take damage. And if Bradley wants to wasteland it, it's a legendary land, so you know that might not even be hurting Harlan that much if he's just got another Eye of Ugin in a reserve. So Brad is just going to use Spatial Contortion to take care of that Eldrazi Mimic, crash in for two with his Endless One, knocking Harlan down to 16. And then he's going to fire off that Wasteland on that Eye of Ugin and pass back to Harlan. Harlan has a copy of Mishra's Factory, and they're just going to pass back. There's that Umazawa's Jite from Brad, as we talked about earlier. Another attack from the Endless One going to take Harlan down to 14. And Brad seems like he's in the driver's seat here. He has a Dismember in his hand and a copy of Umazawa's Jite. Yeah, he has both Jites, which is... Pretty wild. I can't imagine that the first one is going to die. I think the only thing that Harlan could do to destroy Umazawa's uh, Jite is a Ratchet Bomb. But the other way to interact with it is this Fire Exchange Revoker, which will name the Jite. So Harlan, again, just has that copy of Frixen Revoker. It's going to name Jite to shut it off. But like I said, it looks like Brad does have a copy of uh, Dismember in his hand. So I think he's going to use the Dismember to take care of that Frixen Revoker use the floating mana to equip Azumazawa's Jite, and we're going to get an online Jite here in the mirror. And as we saw last match, Jite on a 2-2 Endless one just took Harlan the game. Yeah, despite Bradley having some mana problems, it seems like that this Jite may still be all he needs to win the game. I love Jite. It's One of my favorite cards to play. I remember trying to play it in Teamer Delver, despite having Nimble Mongoose. Because <laughs> I just thought the card was so sweet. That, that didn't last very long. That wasn't the best deck for it. But, you know, I'm a big fan of the Jite. So Harlan just has a copy of Eldrazi Mimic and an Umzawa Jite of his own to deploy. He also has two Eldrazi Temples. So he can start cranking out Reality Smashers if he happens to draw any. Uh, but Brad does have this copy of Umzawa Jite that's active. He's going to attack in with his Endless One. He's going to take care of Harlan's Eldrazi Mimic with his Jite. Lose a counter, gain two counters up to three, deploy a copy of his own Eldrazi Mimic. Both players have just been lightning fast with all of these spells. But that is an Endbringer. That is an Endbringer, but what's, what's that Endbringer really going to do here? Bradley's going to be able to attack. If Harlan doesn't block, he's going to have five counters on his Jite and would be able to kill it. And if Harlan does block, he can just pump, and then he won't even lose his creature. So the, I, I think the Endbringer is awesome. I'm happy to see it in this deck. I'm happy to see it get played. But the story is still just Jite. <laughs> yeah. Would you say that it's about the end for the Endbringer? <laughs> I certainly would, so, unfortunately. So Brad Carpenter is just going to send both of his creatures into the red zone. It looks like Harlan's just going to take the damage. And I have to imagine we're going to see all these counters get taken off this GTA. And again, we were...
previously breaking things down into mana usage, and essentially Harlan paid two mana for the Jitte, two more to equip it. Harlan paid six mana for the Endbringer, and Bradley's four mana that he invested in the Jitte is going to be enough to kill the six mana that Harlan invested into the Endbringer. And he still has another Jitte in reserve. I mean, even if things go these. wrong, I, you know, it's like still... I got another one, just in case I forget about the one that has five counters. And another one. So Brad, Brad's going to get his turn with his Endbringer. We got a Mistress Factory is going to get equipped with a Jitte. And I like this move on Harlan because he's diversifying his threats. The threats. He knows that Bradley only has five GT counters and can't actually kill both creatures. And so Bradley has the opportunity here to just kill the, jit the factory in combat so it doesn't have a chance to pump itself while it's untapped. Mm -hmm. And just kill it before with his GT before Harlan is able to get his own GT counters. Now, an interesting line here would be what if Brad just kills the, the factory with his Jitte? Like, he doesn't have to use the Jitte to kill that Endbringer right now. Granted, the Endbringer will be able to, uh, you know, either remove another counter off the Jitte, or uh, will we'll be able to target the Eldrazi Mimic to, uh, to kill it with its, you know, tap ability. Yeah. But then you get a whole nother attack in on your next turn and get to just put those counters back on the GTA. I think the most threatening thing that Harlan can do with the Endbringer is make it so that whatever creature is carrying the GTA is unable to block. I think, or attack, excuse me. I think that's the, the big powerful thing that this Endbringer can do is just lock down whatever is holding the GTA. The problem, though, is that Bradley has another GTA. So if he can deploy that, this Endbringer, you know, obviously is just not going to be enough. So it looks like Brad is going to use his Jitte to kill off that Mistress Factory. Harlan's going to use the Endbringer to kill an Eldrazi Mimic, and then it does get to untap on his opponent's turn. And let's see how these players decide to take this turn. So this is pretty interesting. Harlan has been able to engineer a way to fight back against his opponent's Jitte. And if Bradley doesn't get a land out quickly to equip his own Jitte, uh, the second one, that is, things can get a little dicey. Because yeah. now Harlan's going to be able to equip his Endbringer and do some real damage. Well, thankfully, that Endbringer is not really going to be able to attack with that GTA since the, uh, the Endless One can just go up to a 7-7 seven right. seven mm -hmm. or an 8-8. Eight eight. But Harlan only needs to keep one mana open to keep his opponent's GTA locked down. And Harlan has the potential to deploy another threat and then equip it with his own GTA. Now, we do have to note that Harlan is down to five, so he can really only keep this dance up for a couple more turns uh, before that endless one that's a 3-3 is going to take this game. Yeah, Harlan has a lot of mana. Looks like he's got a fairly stocked hand. So I think that Harlan's going to be able to do it. Here is a big old endless one. Looks like it's going to be for six. So that's pretty interesting. He's choosing to have it be for six instead of eight, despite having the Ancient Tomb. And that is because he wants to be able to equip it. So he's going to go down to three to equip this. Now, 6-6 six, six is basically the same as an 8-8 eight, eight here. Um, out of dismember range is primarily what matters. So I'm not sure, but I think Harlan just attacked, and Bradley chose not to block. He tapped him to do one damage to the player. Oh, OK, that makes sense. So Brad has finally been able to pick up a copy of Eye of Ugin. So that's going to open him up to five mana here if he happens to have something like Reality Smasher to try and get some damage through. Yeah, unfortunately, it does not give him mana for the Jitte that's sitting in his hand, which is what he really needs right now. I'm, I'm actually pretty impressed with this Endbringer. I sort of looked at things at face value and saw Brad running away with the game with his Jitte, but this Endbringer was the one way to lock it down, and Harlan was able to use his Mishra's Factory to get a window of opportunity for that Endbringer to do its work before it got killed. Maybe it would have been better to just like block the Factory with the 3-3, three, three, um, kill it, let him get two counters on his Jitte, but he's going to have to use one to kill off the, uh, Maybe. Uh, the Endless one, 
uh, and then you can just use your GTA to kill the Endbringer and continue to generate counters on your GTA. So it looks like he's going to draw a card here. Yeah, that uh, the Endbringer has a lot of different modes. So and it is an Eldrazi, so you can use the two colorless mana from Eldrazi Temple for activated abilities of Eldrazi's. So I guess we started in the Jite phase, and now we're in the Endbringer phase. Yeah. <laughs> the various stages of the Eldrazi mirror. So Harlan's going to draw a card, then he's going to play a 4-4 four, four Endbringer, or a 4-4 four, four Endless One, pass the turn back to Bradley. He's going to untap his Endbringer on his opponent's untap step. And despite Harlan being behind in the beginning of the game and being behind on life, it really looks like he's in the driver's seat now that not only does he have this Endbringer, but his own Jite, and he has bigger creatures. Bradley was certainly ahead in the beginning of the game. He had the Jite going, everything was going smoothly, but he was stumbling a bit on mana, so he wasn't able to capitalize on that advantage that he had as much as he had wanted to. And with Harlan hitting all of his land drops and having access to so much mana, that's really what allowed Harlan to catch up. So Harlan has been able to find a copy of Reality Smasher here. He's going to deploy it. He's going to make the uh, Endless One with the Umzawa's Jite on it not be able to block. And he's going to send in with the 6-6 Endless One that has his own Umzawa's Jite on it. So this is obviously a nitpicking a little bit, but I'm a little surprised that Harlan played the Reality Smasher pre-combat and then chose not to attack with it. Might have been something as simple as he just drew it, said, oh, perfect, I can attack with this too. And then as soon as he started going through the motions, realized, you know what, it's so unlikely that I lose. I might as well just play things conservatively, make sure, sure there's no chance, and then as an afterthought, decided not to attack with it. So Brad's just going to take the six damage, go down to nine. Harlan's going to get two counters on his Umazawa's Jite. And ha now we have a... Phyrexian Metamorph from Bradley Carpenter. He might be able to copy that Endbringer, and then we'll have some, some action going on. And we've seen Drowner of Hope as the sixth drop of choice in Modern. We haven't seen that much Endbringers, but I wonder if after seeing this, we'll see Endbringers pop up a little bit more in the Modern format. I could definitely see that. It's, yeah, it's been pretty impressive. It does a lot for only six mana. It does a lot. It which, has is, a, which is really only four mana when you look at Aya Bugan. Right. It has a lot, of, a lot of versatility. Notably, it has a lot of versatility in a board stall. One thing that's a classic component that you need to look at when you're playing a creature deck is when you get into these board stalls, sometimes you just don't have profitable attacks, and neither does your opponent. So you end up not doing very much, or you're attacking with one creature at a time. And having creatures that have activated abilities outside of combat can be extremely relevant. And that's what we're seeing this Endbringer do right now. So you're saying Endbringer is kind of being like Olivia Vildare in here? <laughs> Just controlling <laughs> yeah, the board? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Now it looks like we did get word that Brad Carpenter has copied Endbringer with his Phyrexian Metamorph. So we basically got a turn here for Harlan, and then things get real interesting when both players have GTA and Endbringer on their side of the battlefield. Yeah. Harlan does have a big mana advantage, though. Harlan is a big mana advantage. He has bigger creatures, but even still, things are getting kind of mired out. This is going to be a pretty big attack, though, and force some trades. So we'll have to see what Bradley wants to do here. He's going to be on the, the losing side of this interaction, most likely. But he has his GTA counters, and hopefully he can make the most of them. So Harlan has used his Endbringer to make the Endless One that has Umazawa's Jite with three counters on it, not able to attack or block this turn. He's going to attack with his 6-6 six, six Endless One equipped with Jite with two counters, a 4-4 four, four Endless One, and a Reality Smasher. So Brad gets to figure out here how he wants to block and try not to die. So notably, the Jite can give minus one, minus one to whatever Harlan wants, but it can only pump up the creature that it's equipped to. So that'll be one of the more notable things to keep track of inside of this combat. Bradley would really like to engineer things in a way so that he doesn't lose his own Endbringer, which the Phyrexian Metamorph is uh, currently copied as. So Bradley needs to make sure that he gets through this combat without dying while keeping that his own Endbringer alive. 
and I don't think there's any any blocks that's going to allow him to keep his endbringer alive outside of just not blocking with it. Right. He just can't put the endbringer in combat. We also have to remember that Brad uh, can effectively gain six life off of that GTA. Right. It is also relevant that Brad has more counters on his GTA before combat damage, but Harlan will have more counters after combat. So we may... All right, there we go. So not the, the worst trade. I think Bradley basically did what he needed to do. He got one trade and one trump block. And now he gets to untap with his Endbringer, which is really all he wants in this situation. And there is a Thought Not Seer. It's going to take a copy of Endbringer out of Brad's hand. Looks like Harlan might have another creature to deploy as well. And Harlan is just firing on all cylinders. He's, He's got a go ton to of one. mana. He's got a ton of creatures, and with that Endbringer, he's been able to get a ton of cards to just keep it going. Now, Harlan is going to go down to one, so if Brad wants to force him to gain some life with his GTA counter, he can by using that Endbringer to do one point of damage to yep. him. So Brad has been able to find a sixth mana source here for Eldrazi spells with another Cavern of Souls but the Thought Not Seer took the extra copy of Endbringer out of his hand already. Yeah, I have to imagine that Bradley's might just be dead on Harlan's turn. I feel like an all-out attack from Harlan is gonna, gonna have a good chance of doing it. So Brad's just gonna pass the turn back. Harlan's gonna use his Endbringer to make that end this one. Well, he's gonna go to a combat step, gonna make his end this one not be able to attack a block. Let's see what Brad wants to do. He's going to target Harlan with the Endbringer. Harlan's going to gain two life, go up to three, take one damage, go down to two. And he's still sitting quite pretty. Yeah, Harlan just looks like he's too strong in this situation. He's been going to the Tarmo Gym. He's been working out. That Tarmo Gym. He's been building his board. And I think it's about time to cue the Miley Cyrus because Harlan is going to come in like a wrecking ball and finish this game. Might be this combat step. Ooh, so it looks like we've got a Phyrexian Revoker, and Brad is going Kaboom. to pack it up. So I have to, I have to think that Harlan obviously was going to name Umazawa's GTA with that Revoker to stop Brad from being able to gain life. Going to crash in with his multitudes of Eldrazi creatures, and Harlan Fear is going to take that match two to one in the 75-card Colorless Eldrazi Mirror.